Going in to do the cylinder leak, leak down test, um, I've got a kit. It's one of these Maddox uh, cylinder leak down kits. And what you have is two gauges and a regulator. And you feed it uh, air from your air compressor. I've got 100 psi air down here. They don't want you to go over 100, that's the limit for this one. And it has a hose that you put to the cylinder. What you have to do is thread this into the cylinder. So, let me back up a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do is you roll each cylinder to top dead center with the valves closed. If it's a top dead center, the air pressure won't push the piston down and the cylinder should be sealed. Um, once you know that you've got it at top dead center, then this thread and this, this the one that's on there right now, there, uh, there are some adapters in the kit, but this one on the hose uh, should match the threads uh, that the original spark plugs have on it. So then you carefully feed that in you put air on here, you dial up the pressure going in and you see what the uh, pressure is on the opposite side. Uh, you know, whether the cylinder's holding pressure or, or it's uh, leaking down. And the trick is getting them all to top dead center. Um, I have a wrench on the crankshaft that I can rotate it around with. and what you, the best way is to go through the firing order and down here on the back of the manifold um, the firing order is um, in, in the casting so you can read it. Uh, you could also go to the service manual and, and get it. But it's right there. So my intent is to roll it over, start with cylinder number one and and then you know every once I miss my guess, every 90 degrees, I ought to have another uh, cylinder come up. Now it takes, um, on a four-stroke engine, it takes two full crankshaft revolutions or 720 degrees uh, to get all eight cylinders through firing. And so, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll have to go through two full revolutions. And it'll be a little bit tricky, you know, getting each cylinder up. But... Uh, I ought to be able to do it. I'll get my little bore camera out and my little um, uh, bore scope camera so I can see when they're up to the top and then uh, and we'll go through it. I'll show you. Okay, uh, I'm going to start cranking the engine by hand. I have a long, it's actually a torque wrench so I don't over torque the bolt. Um, I'm not sure on this one, but on the Camaro, the, the bolt torqued to like 60 foot-pounds. It's only a 5 8 inch head. And uh, it should only take about 20 foot-pounds or so to 20 or 30 to roll the engine over. So I've got the torque wrench set at 50. I'm going to just roll it over. All the plugs are out, so it ought to roll easily. And, you know, there's a pointer down there, that white mark. Um, I get the, there, the white mark, the V-shape down in the center of the screen. Um, I should be able to roll it until the timing mark comes up for that on the compression stroke for number one. You can be compression or you can be exhaust, so got to make sure it's the right time around. And then I'll go around and roll number eight until it's up and so forth and follow through the uh, firing order. I've got my phone set up there with my little camera. So I can take a look on the on this cylinder. It shouldn't matter too much, but I can look through the spark plug hole and make sure the valves are closed. I hooked up the gauges. I hooked up my air compressor. I dialed it up to 90. I don't think I need to go further than that. So you turn this regulator knob. You start with it backed all the way out from the counterclockwise position at zero, and I dialed it up to 90. And there's a calibrated orifice on the other side. And I'm holding yeah, 89 PSI on. This is cylinder number one. So that's pretty good. You can hear there's a little bit of leakage. 
they have you pull out the PCV valve and the dipstick so you can kind of listen but um, but heck only being down at PSI sounds pretty good so you're gonna you got some gaps in the rings you're always gonna have a little leakage alright that looks good so now I'm gonna go dial up the next cylinder in the firing order which I think is 8 and we'll um, dial this down now dial the pressure off of it and if you had a huge leak that would possibly mean you don't have it on compression All right. so we'll let that stop for now and I have the hose um, threaded in to the spark plug opening so I'm going to unthread that one crank the engine over to the next cylinder and we'll try the next alright so I've got it up to number 8 let's try number 8 dial up the pressure Let her stabilize a little bit. And what do I got? Eighty two, four, eighty six. All right, eighty six with a little bit of leakage, but hey, that's not bad either. Okay. So we'll roll it. We'll use the little camera to the next one. The next one down there is number four. See, it goes one, eight, four, three. And so I'll do number four, and then I'll cross over and do number three, and we'll work our way through the firing order. I didn't save all the video that I used uh, on my borescope camera to, to show when I got things up to top dead center. But here's a piston that's you know probably about 90 degrees away and, and is going to be coming up to top dead center. And you can see the cylinder wall, and you can see the valves on top. Here's one when you get it all the way to the top, and you can see there's no shiny cylinder wall left, and... The piston is all the way up. It's almost touching that valve at the top left of the screen. So again, another look here uh, with it at the bottom. Uh, I was watching the camera as I cranked up that piston until it went all the way to the top and was about ready to start going back down again. Uh, and it, you know, again to get back into this position. And it worked pretty darn effectively. The only real trick is making sure that you keep the camera back in the spark plug hole because if it protrudes into the cylinder, that piston coming up will crush it. When I ran all my numbers, some of the cylinders were just about perfect. I mean, 90 to, you know, to 88, to 89, um, 89. Very little leakage at all. And then I had old number three in here, which was about 80. And I rolled it over a second time, and it still came back at 80. Now, I'm not horribly concerned about that. But typically, you'd like them to be within about 10%. And 10% of 90 is 9. Okay. Or 8.9. So, if I go 10% from 89, it's essentially 9. And then minus 9 is 80. So it's right on the edge of being 10% low. And technically that's probably, it's probably actually not a problem. Among other things, the engine is cold. And normally what you'd like to do on this test is warm it up and do it after it's been warmed up. Uh, I figured I'd do it cold um, I already had the plugs out. It's like, put the plugs in, fire it up, warm it up. It was just too much time. So I thought while I had it apart, I would get a check. And frankly, I'm pretty happy with most of the check. 
um, except for that one. So I'm going to spray, I've got a can of storage seal with a long straw. I was going to use a squirt can, but it's too hard to get underneath those big manifolds. So I'm going to spray it with some fogging oil and make another measurement and just see if I can tell is it ring seal or is it, I mean it doesn't take much for a valve to be you know not seating a hundred percent on a cold engine um, but let's see okay well adding a little oil to it uh, did bring it up uh, almost to where the other cylinders were that were at 84 it's starting to drop as the oil must be blowing out but it started over here at 84 and now it's back to about 82 which suggests the ring seals off a little bit but a little oil um, puts that back in bounds around 83-84 right around some of the other cylinders and you know the ring seals probably a little bit off I mean it's allowed to be when the engines cold the pistons get you know larger when they warm up and so I guess you know that's that puts it in range and I don't see any evidence of a head gasket leak or anything I haven't seen or heard anything I mean you can hear a little bit of leakage but the cylinders on either side have really good compression so you know it's not like they're leaking pressure back and I don't I'm not blowing any water out of the cooling jacket onto the floor out of the back of the stern drive so I'm a I'm going to say that's good and I'm going to move on to uh, testing ignition parts and ignition cables.